Okay. Okay, so this is mine. Okay, look to the side. Other side. Okay. Okay, ready? Ready? Look at look. <laughs> That's not that bad, but <laughs> hold it up next to you. <laughs> look. <laughs> okay, look to the side. What the side? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, All right. Gosh. Get it back. Okay. okay. Here, you can take the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're gonna hate it. <laughs> All right, let's show the picture. No, not to me. Show the picture first to the camera. Okay, like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, now. Now let me see. into this topic before a little bit but if you're a heterosexual or bisexual woman one of the most important things you can know is when a man hates you now this topic has come up again because the paint your mate challenge has been making its way across the internet and it's restarted this conversation which i think is one that we all need to be reminded of periodically the paint your mate challenge is a date night of sorts where two spouses sit across from each other and paint each other it originally started as a cute little challenge where couples made each other laugh but too many of the male spouses were showing glaringly red flags as they were painting their spouses atrociously. And I'm going to put some of those samples in this video. So why do we have these conversations? Well, because like shut up rings and wedding pranks, it's another clear indicator for the commitment and effort your spouse feels towards activities that you do together. In the video I've shown, the woman is not a professional artist. Neither of them are. However, she manages to create a decent likeness of her spouse. In the most viral videos for this challenge, most of the women actually get pretty close. Now let me show you some of the ones for male spouses. So you can see why this has become a topic of conversation. In comparison with some of the more positive videos, we can see that when men actually try, they can also get pretty close if not doing a better job of capturing the women that they care about. But the key word here is effort. It takes a bit of time, effort, and money to put together a date night like this one. For the spouses that didn't even get close in this challenge, it's not an indicator of artistic talent, but a way to gauge his effort in something that matters to you. It's also a reflection of how he views you, a literal reflection. This is an important topic, not just because we love bashing men here, but because a lot of this is textbook behavior that if you can identify, you can literally save your or someone that you love's life. 70% of women at some point in their lives will be assaulted by a man that's close to them. And in cases like Lacey Peterson and Shanann Watts, two high profile cases where these women and their children were annihilated by their spouses, people often wonder what the signs were. My biggest takeaway from watching true crime is to look at the signs of what was going on with these women and their relationships before these horrible situations happened to them. And if you pay attention and you watch a lot like I have, I'm talking thousands of shows, movies, documentaries, you will see clear patterns. And a lot of the signs that I talk about in my videos are the foundations of emotional abuse on which those violent crimes were committed. So let's go over some of the telltale signs that he might hate you. If you express that you like something and that it's important to you and he decides to belittle it or ignore it completely, our example here is the paint your mate challenge. He hates you. It's not a quirk. It's not that's how he is. And it's not just his personality. He hates you, okay? Another good example of this is when people give you compliments. Watch his face. If he grimaces or he doesn't join in and celebrate you and gas you up just like your friends are, he hates you. If he is constantly comparing you to other women, especially your friends, he hates you. No matter how you try to join in and be like, oh, you know, she's prettier and, you know, maybe she does have a nicer body or blah, blah, blah. If he's just randomly bringing up other women to compare to you, he hates you. He's sabotaging you and he's probably trying to sabotage your friendships as well. Now, this is a big one. This is the one that gets everyone upset. If a man cheats on you, 
at least in that moment, he hates you. He's comfortable treating you like a person he met on the street. And that's just what it is. Cheating is emotional violence. It's emotional abuse. And a man who does that to you hates you. Another good one is if he lets his mother disrespect you. Not only does he hate you, but he has a weird mom thing guaranteed. They both need therapy and you don't need to be involved. According to many psychiatrists in the Chris Watts case and the Scott Peterson case, they both had boy moms, narcissistic moms, and had major mother wounds. That's the reason why a lot of these boy moms get a lot of flack online. And another reason why it's kind of dangerous to be with these types of men. Because they're constantly overstepping the wives' boundaries and disrespecting the wives. Both Shanann and Lacey put up a lot before their untimely deaths. Scott Peterson's mom pretended to be a holier-than-thou, like, very religious woman who was hypercritical of every little thing that Lacey used to do, no matter how sweet, no matter how nice and caring that she was. And this was a woman who they didn't find out until Scott was like in his 20s or 30s that she had had more than three other children with different men that she had given up for adoption. And one of the incidents that Shanann Watts had with Chris Watts' mother was that the mother had tried to give the child peanuts in her ice cream, even though Shanann had explicitly said that the child was allergic to peanuts. Who does that? Men make decisions based on what is beneficial to them. And a man will stay with you even though he hates you because your presence and labor in his life is beneficial to him and it will be against his own interest to leave you. Your love, your care, your labor in the home, the way that you take care of the children, the way that having a wife benefits him at work, church, school, whatever he has going on especially a lot of these high-powered jobs, you know, like doctors and lawyers. They need a wife because they cannot sustain a life on their own. They are getting free emotional and actual labor from you. And that is why they stay. So they would rather stay and have their interests served and hate you than to actually be like, you know what? I actually kind of hate this bitch. And being around her is causing me to feel insecure and causing me to feel stressed out. And this really wasn't a good decision for me, so I'm going to leave. Because in good conscience, I shouldn't be here taking advantage of this person. No, they're going to take advantage of you until they can find another person to fill those needs. That's why oftentimes when women are diagnosed with terminal illnesses, they're left by themselves. The men move on and find their partner before the woman even passes away. These cancer centers are full of women without their men there supporting them. It's typically the women in their lives, the friends, the family. Those are the people that are left there picking up the slack. You might ask yourself, if this person hated me so much, why are they still with me? And it's simple. It's because they're very self-serving people, which isn't necessarily a hugely bad thing. Women could be more self-serving than they are, but men will still stay with you and hate your guts because it serves their self-interest. Even if it's down to, I know I can come home, get some with her sometimes, or they know they can come home and, you know, she's going to coddle me and try to see what's wrong or she'll help me solve a problem or help me with my business or my business plan. She'll help me study, help me with schoolwork the whole time. You know, just basic build a man stuff, which is why we're just not doing that anymore. So please be on the lookout for these things because not only is it a recipe for a miserable life, but also because being aware of these things could be the difference between life and death. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more. I just want to say thanks again to all my loyal subscribers and everyone who supported me over the last year. We are on day four.